Okay, so they're out of the Arctic. Now where are they going? They're, they're going all sorts of places. Um, well, we left them off in Paris, and um, I think there is a good expectation that they uh, would begin back in Paris, and we just wanted to subvert that expectation at every turn. So um, we're going to a new location. It is a tremendously cool location. I will say that um, we are going to be doing the same structural, using the same structural device uh, this year, which is one day per episode. Um, and then given that, you know, the sky's the limit. We're going to be jumping around in time. We're going to be dealing with a, um, uh, not necessarily just an Arctic virus this year. And we want to reinvent the show in a way, not as completely as, say, an American Horror Story does, but we are definitely picking up our group from the Arctic and figuring out a cool way to drop them into another situation that will feel hopefully just as perilous but different. Was there anything that didn't work for you in season one that you felt kind of that you wanted to retool a bit in season two? There, there always are. I mean, there's always moments that you go, oh my God, I wish we had, you know, done this differently or that differently. I don't want to, like, pick and choose them, but... Um, there, there were always moments like that. When I watch a show, like I'll watch a show I worked on 10 years ago, and if it's something I wrote, so I spent a lot of time with, I watch that show, and pretty much the only thing I'm thinking is, I wish I had mentioned to the director, can we please do another take of that, or that prop really sucked, and I wish we didn't, you know, or, or I wish we had more time with that effect or something. So it, for me, it's really frustrating. I never watch stuff that I worked on anymore because it's just frustrating, and I get pissed. Can you tell us about the new characters? Um, I can tell you we're going to have some new characters in season two. Um, I don't want to say, just because uh, there's going to be a new member of our CDC team. I will say that. Um, other than that, I don't want to get too deep into it, uh, just because it would give away some stuff that's going to be revealed very early on. Um, but we're very excited. We're trying to find, uh, we're in the casting process right now. And if things go well, knock on wood, we're going to get some really good actors. And uh, I think it's going to be a very cool season. So when you're, since you're, you have the 13 day thing, mm -hmm. how do you plan that out to make sure you tell that story over 13 days? Um, it's, it's really just sort of forcing ourselves into, um, that's the box that we climb into at the beginning of the season, and which is not to say that we can't, like last season we did get out of the 13 days in a, in a way by going to hallucinations, by going to, you know, at the end of the season we flashed forward, you know, um, uh, or we didn't flash forward, we jumped forward, um, uh, you know, seven months. And so we, but the box that we live in is that one day per episode box, which keeps the tension really high and keeps, you know, you have to figure out what to do because things are happening very quickly. And so that I think is really great about the show because a lot of these outbreaks are, you know, it's not, they're not as contained as 13 days, but um, they are very contained and, and critical moments um, when you have to figure things out very quickly. So I think that helps us a lot. So maybe talk about your favorite moment or scene from the first season and for why it was. Um, I would say, I would say my favorite moments from season one were um, some of the musical moments. Um, we love our crazy music. Um, and if anything, we're gonna we're gonna double down on the crazy this year. So um, those were my favorites. I mean, this, the, the moments when we could play something really weird or horrible or off kilter, and then find a piece of music to play over it that was like, what? What? You know? Um, and I think that's something that the show does really well. Um, uh, our challenge this year would be to figure out how not to have it be expected, um, because it's like every time someone gets killed, they're gonna you know play a weird song. But we want to find music that. This is a little strange and it's unsettling and not what you'd expect. Um, and we're trying to do that. Those are sort of our directions to everybody this year, from writers to the composer to you know directors and DPs. Is, is let's come up with different ways to show things so that if you expect we're going here, we're not going to go there. We're going to go to a different place, and it'll feel cool and organic to the show, not just different for different sake, but is not the expected. Speaking of directors, uh, the look of the show is so great. Um, are you working with the same group of directors? Are you going to bring new directors in? Both. Yeah, both. Um, uh, we're bringing in um, one of our uh, directors last year who did uh, episode three, which is one of my favorites. Steve Adelson is our producer director this year, and so he is going to be doing five of them. Uh, we're bringing back Jeremiah Chechen, who did um, a block bus last year. Uh, I think it was 10-11. And we're bringing him back for, for four episodes. Uh, and then we have a couple new directors we're working with as well. So that's one of the nice things about a second season is you get to know who you like and try to lock them up early and get them in for a couple episodes. And then it takes out so much of the guesswork because anytime you have a new director, you're going off their reputation and their material. And it could end up great or it could be a disaster. And I've had both things happen before. So it's really nice to 
have a familiarity, both with, with cast, with directors, with writers, and be able to say, great, remember that thing we did last year? Let's do that, you know, or let's do a version of that, and you have that trust already built in. It's very nice. Can you talk a little bit about the wrinkle of immortality? Because mm -hmm. that was really a surprise in what was going to be, you know, a virus drama. Yeah. Like, how is that going to play out in the music scene? Sure. Um, well, the immortality thing was such a great twist, and it was something that was always in the original pilot, um, and we, it was actually, immortality was mentioned in the original pilot, and so what we decided very early on is, let's have it be a mystery for the season and push it back, <laughs> which I thought was a great choice, so that when it did come up, you're like, whoa, that, you know, didn't see that coming. Immortality is definitely a big part of season two, and where we want to go in this season is to take immortality and really unpack it, because we didn't get to spend a lot of time with what it means to be immortal. And now that we have a couple of characters who appear to be immortal um, for you know the rest of their natural lives, um, we are we want to deal with not just hey that's really cool and I get to live forever, but also wow that's really awful and what do you have to deal with. You know, what's it like to become tired of life? What's it like to watch all your loved ones die around you? And wow, great, I have to live forever, but everybody I love dies. I mean, is it really a trade-off that's worth making? And does being immortal change your, like Walker at the end of season one, appears to have really drunk the immortal Kool-Aid. And how far gone is she to the other side? What's, how has her thinking changed, given that she now is coming from a completely different place versus, say, Jordan or versus, you know, Hitachi? How much are we going to see of inside Alaria with Julia being in there? Um, I, I don't want to say exactly, but um, we, we will get we'll to know more about Alaria, for sure. Um, inside Alaria, um, I, I will tell you this as, as a clue, which is um, when we go to to a location, we kind of stay there for the most part. And so what we do is we bring all of our troubles with us to the location as opposed to flashing, you know, to intercutting and going outside. So we talked about a version of the season where we would go to the new location and then we would um, do cutaways to what was going on at, at Laria HQ. I'm not saying we're not doing that completely, but it's not a huge part of the show. We'd much rather bring our our uh, mythology and our tr our personal troubles to the, to the location and deal with them there. So we know Billy Campbell is coming back in season two. Can you tell us when we might see him and anything about his storyline? Um, I I can say that um, I, I don't want to talk about his storyline okay. because it's um, it, it will be unexpected. Uh, let me say that um, he will come in in a way that you wouldn't expect him to come in. He will not come in at the place where you would you would expect him to come in. And I mean, Billy's so great. The challenge with him and with that character is how to shake it up in a subsequent season. And so we're really, really shaking it up. Um, and if you you know you saw him at the end of season one and he was you know about to go and you know bust into the Laria headquarters in Paris and cause havoc. And so when we pick up with him, we won't pick up exactly at that, at that place, but we want to know, of course, what happened to him and how has he gotten out of the place where he's at. So it was a challenge, but at the same time, I think it's something that he will be very good at playing, and uh, I think it's going to be really cool and unexpected, I hope. The fact that they preserve the heads, does that mean that they can all kind of be put back together and reanimated? No. Is Jerry Ryan I can tell you that. I can tell you that. I would love to have Jerry back because she's phenomenal, and unfortunately, we told her. So, uh, Flashbacks. <laughs> Anybody can come back in a flashback, anyone can come back in a hallucination. As a matter of fact, we will be you know, dead on Helix doesn't really mean, it, it means dead, but it doesn't mean you can't see the person again, which is, which I love about the show, because it's like, oh, you know, heck, you know, we never get to see that person again. It's like, well, perhaps we can see them again. So, no, there's no, there's no reanimation that I can tell you that right off the bat. We're not, um, we're trying to stay in, you know, somewhat of a, a realm of, of uh, realistic science, even though we go to, you know, a far out place, we're not saying that you can toss someone's head and then sew it back on in some way and reanimate them. It's cool, but that's not our show. So why are they keeping the heads? The heads? Honestly, the, the, the head thing was, um, had to do with the Narvik virus. It had to do with getting the, the immortal, the heads of all the people in there are immortal. So it had to do with having an access to immortal DNA to be able to kind of platform it onto the Narvik virus. So that was our thinking on the heads. But uh, it's not the last, last head we've seen in the show. So. Popping up around the city now. You never know. <laughs>
Anything's possible. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's the thing about the show, this show, I think, is that it is a little crazy and out there, and anything is possible. You know, it's, it's if, if, you know, we, we've thrown things out there that are so crazy, sometimes we have to stop ourselves and say, oh, no, that doesn't make any sense. We love it, but, yeah, but we're not going to do that. And other things, it's like, can we get away with that, really? It's, you know, that's pretty cool. Okay, it's great. Let's do that. So we have moments like that all the time. And at least in the first season, everything was very confined mm-hmm. into the Arctic Station. It right. sounds like they're going to be outside now and moving around to more locations. We'll be able to move around more, but we're going to go for that same claustrophobia and confinement, that sense of being trapped in a, in a place. That, that's going to be every season, for sure. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.